eleven dollars. Chili mac and beans, eleven fifty. Mac and cheese, ten twenty five. Twelve dollars. Eleven dollars. Oh, that's four ounces. That's two servings. Okay. So you know, five something. What's the most? What is that? Fifteen dollars. Let's see what we can do better. Whether you're a tent camper or an RV camper, I'm gonna show you a few meals that you can do and bases for meals that you can do in your home kitchen and a dehydrator. This will save you money and it'll also save you weight. If you're making your own chili, the first thing you're gonna do is brown your meat. Okay, I pulled it off the stove so you can hear One me. One thing that is important to remember, when you're dehydrating anything, Fat is the enemy. How in the world can you dehydrate something like chili or stew when there's fat involved? You can drain fat off of the meat, and sometimes I've even rinsed it. Like for my just regular dehydrated ground beef, I've actually rinsed it with water and then put it in the dehydrator and you get rid of all of the fat. Another way you can do this is to go ahead and make whatever you're making, stick it in the refrigerator overnight, you know, several hours, and then you can skim that fat off of that. The problem with fat is that it can make things go rancid so you just want as little fat as possible. I'm going to go ahead and make my chili like I normally do so you make your chili however you want to do it and then I'll come back when it's time to dehydrate and don't forget you can also dehydrate cans of chili. If you want to buy a can of Wolf Brand chili, scoop off that layer of the orange fat and you can put that in your dehydrator. And here I'm just making my chili like I normally would minus the water. And that's it. For this batch, I'm not going to add water because obviously that would be counterintuitive. Okay. Thick like this, let it cool, and then put it on the dehydrator. Okay, for my next little meal, I'm going to do spaghetti and sauce. I'm going to leave the meat out because I already have the hamburger meat dried. So you know if you want to add that, you can just add that. So I'm going to add my home canned tomatoes and make my own sauce. And I'll show you what it looks like. kind of changed my mind on this one. This is just going to be more like, you know, pasta with chopped tomatoes and I may add chicken to this when it's rehydrated. I could just add some cheese to it or eat it plain. The chili's pretty cool. I have this sheeting. You can buy this separately. See, I've got it on my little sheets. You can buy this very cheap and you can cut it yourself to fit. It's not expensive at all, but I'll spread this all out on here. Okay, I've got all the chili out. You'll be amazed on how tiny all this gets. I'm gonna do the same thing with the pasta. I spread this around. For this batch, I'm going to use this for macaroni and cheese. Don't do like I did. I thought I'd be all cute and use shell macaroni, but they're sticking to each other. They're going inside of each other. You know what I mean? So just use good old elbow macaroni. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with these. Okay, I have the dehydrator loaded, and I forgot to mention, I'm going to also use this for things like, you know, pasta salad. I'll just um, rehydrate this and add in, you know, artichoke hearts, feta, really whatever you want with some Italian dressing. I'm probably going to put this at about one, maybe 140, 135, 140. I'm going to check it because I've got meat in here, so you want to use a higher temperature when you have meat. You see how old this is. That This bottom tray is what originally came with it and then I've added trays as the years have gone by. If you want to buy a dehydrator, I'll put a, I'll find it and put a link below. Don't get an expensive one. And you also do not get one that does not have airflow. So I want to show you what this looks like after about three hours. So you can see how it's already really, really dry. Just the tomatoes are kind of leathery. Let's check the chili. Let's see, oh yeah, this bottom, and I'll rotate these trays. The tomatoes are still a little moist. Flip this whole thing, look. <laughs> nice, getting crispy. It doesn't take as long as you think. Everything is done, it didn't take very long. Here's the chili, Let's see if I can get it in. Look, very dry, perfect. Even though, you know, I put little red bell peppers and yellow bell peppers, just kind of whatever I had in my freezer. And it's all crispy. This is the spaghetti with the tomatoes. I'll just put this in a bag. And then when I want to rehydrate it, just put a little water in there. I'm going to show you real quick what I plan to do with some of this little macaroni. I'll get you down a little bit. Let me see. Some of my videos, I think I'm too close. And then some of them, I think you can't see what I'm doing. Okay. There's now, I'm carrying this stuff with me, but if you are a backpacker or if you are someone that doesn't have this stuff, you don't want to carry it. I have this cheese powder made in the USA 
and you can buy this online. I'll put a link below. This is actually pretty good stuff. And I'll add the cheese powder and dry milk. Just put the water in there, some warm water, and literally you have macaroni and cheese. And no, I'm not gonna measure. You can, you know, do whatever you like. So I'm gonna put some, so like I said, I'm gonna carry, I carry this stuff with me camping, you know, in the camper just to have. So I'll put a little bit of dried milk in there. And then I'll put some cheese powder. <laughs> and, and of course you can add your, you know, fresh cheddar cheese if you have it. Perfect, very easy. You can imagine, you can just do this with all kinds of things. Of course, if you're out of time, rush for time, those you know camping meals are great. But if you've got a little bit of extra time, especially like in the winter time and not like me when it's 105 heat index outside doing this, do this in the off season. 